Hey friends, Ash here with GenSense. Hope that you're doing really well. So this video today was requested by one of you guys in that little community post where I asked you for different video ideas. And I decided just to go ahead and knock this one out without pulling it from the box, which I haven't done for a little while. We'll get back to that soon. But today we're gonna be going over some of my favorite discontinued fragrances that I wish they would bring back. Will it ever happen? Probably not. I mean, I'd be surprised if even one of these came back from the dead and was able to be purchased again, but man, wouldn't that be awesome? We're just doing seven here today. Realistically, we could be doing 37 or 57 or 67 <laughs> different fragrances, but just seven. That means there's a lot of fragrances being left on the cutting room floor that maybe we'll talk about in a future video. But for now, let's jump into it and check these guys out. Fragrances being discontinued is just a part of life. And it always sucks when it happens to one of your favorites, but it's something that if you stick around fragrances for long enough, you kind of have to get used to. Oftentimes these fragrance brands don't even let you know when a fragrance is being discontinued because it's like they don't want to admit that the fragrance just isn't working out anymore, isn't making them money like it used to, or maybe it just didn't reach as far as they were hoping that the fragrance would. Maybe they were hoping it was gonna be a huge hit, it had so much promise before it came out, and then it just flopped and then they unceremoniously just kick it to the curb. Other times there are different things at play. Maybe the creative director of the house leaves and goes somewhere else, but for one reason or another, these ones, they met an untimely end. All right, first fragrance we're gonna talk about today is from Dolce & Gabbana, and it is by Man. This fragrance is pricey if you wanna buy it nowadays. You're gonna to have to look at some place like uh, eBay or maybe Mercari or whatever. And you also have to be wary because there were a lot of fakes made of this fragrance. I know, an extra little stressful part to paying a ton of money for a fragrance. So you gotta love it. This one catches a lot of hype. A lot of people say this is one of the best men's fragrances ever, one of the best things Dolce & Gabbana ever did. And I gotta say, it does smell awesome. But is it worth the price for most of you out there? Nope. A lot of you out there would be really disappointed if you paid $300 or more for this, then you got it in and realized, ah, I'm not actually in love with this. Dang it. It's fresh and spicy, good amount of nutmeg in here, lavender as well, and slightly sweet all the way through, which really takes it up a notch, takes it to the next level, you could say. It has sandalwood, tobacco, leather, and amber in the base of the fragrance, and it smells classy, and gentlemanly, but really wearable at the same time with a bit of a throwback feel. I kind of wish Dolce & Gabbana would bring this back along with a couple other of their discontinued fragrances. Maybe do something like YSL did with M7 and some of their other fragrances when they brought those back. You know, put it in a separate little line, their classics fragrances or something, and bring them back. Will it happen? Nah, probably not. Now it's time for my personal favorite fragrance in this entire list. If I could only keep one of these, it would be this one. And it's good old Envy from Gucci. Another one that is horrifically expensive on eBay, but it's definitely worth owning in my opinion. This is absolutely amazing. It has sandalwood, ginger, and incense, along with a bit of cardamom as some of the notes in the fragrance, and there are actually a whole lot of notes in this one. It's that more uh, classic style of fragrance in terms of the note breakdown, where they tell you every single little thing you could possibly pick up in the fragrance. There are two extremes with fragrance note breakdowns. There are the current fragrances coming out that only have three notes, and then there is stuff like this where it's every note. I think the correct spot to be is somewhere in between there. Gucci Envy to me still works absolutely fantastically. It still smells just as good today. It doesn't smell dated in my opinion. Other people would disagree, but to me it doesn't. And like Dolce & Gabbana by, it's really classy, very gentlemanly grown up. Now let's go to Escada. And I could have picked any of the Escada men's fragrances because they are all discontinued. Escada no longer makes men's fragrances. They killed all of them. And Escada had a lot of hits, in my opinion. They had some fragrances that were absolutely stunning. They had a couple that were uh, not great, but at a cheap price, they would be fine. But then they had others that were really, really, really good. The one I'm gonna talk about is the one that got the most hype and it's magnetism. And I know I'm like beating a dead horse here, but if you buy magnetism on eBay, 
do be careful because it is another fragrance that has been faked pretty heavily. A lot of these discontinued ones actually have a number of fakes out there, more so than current fragrances even. I think because, and I, I could be wrong here, I'm just kind of spitballing, but I think because a lot of people may not realize how the fragrance actually smelled. Like if they didn't own the fragrance before, they don't have anything to really compare it to. You can't go out to a store and, you know, contrast and compare. So if you weren't familiar with the fragrance when it was out, then you might get taken for a ride. This is a really unique fragrance. It's got a bit of a, a powdery feel to it, but not overly so. It's got a bit of a grape soda smell to it when you first spray it on. A lot of people will say that, that it has this sweet grape soda effervescence in the opening. Other people will say uh, vanilla Coke, that it smells a bit like that. Again, sort of a soda feel. So I guess it depends on how you interpret the fragrance as to what style of soda you're gonna think it smells like. To me, it leans more toward the grape soda side of things if we're gonna break it down that way. Very unique compared to what's coming out nowadays. Magnetism for men stands alone. It had a great compliment factor, decent performance as well. Amazing in cooler weather or on a night out and an absolute bummer that it's no longer around, and frankly, that Escada is no longer making men's fragrances. Now, one that flies under the radar a bit, uh, flew under the radar when it was out too, to an extent. It's from Gianfranco Fair. It's Bergamotto Merino. This is an Eau de Cologne, 200 ml size bottle. This fragrance for a while was a cheapie at discounters. You could pick this up for very little, and it's an absolutely killer spring and summertime fragrance, great casual fragrance. The type of scent, of course, with a bottle this size and an eau de cologne concentration that you can spray on crazily, just go as heavy as you want and it's not gonna matter. This one had notes of citrus, melon, uh, white florals and musk, very clean and has a watery feeling to it as well, kind of a green, watery feel. And even though the note breakdown here is not super different from a lot of fragrances out there, it actually stands on its own quite well. Uh, some people have compared it to Mugler Cologne or Bright Neroli from Ferrari, but it doesn't really smell like either of those. But I would say if you like those scents, you should like this one. Then we're going to a Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit Absolute from Dior. So Fahrenheit Absolute maintains that violet from the original Fahrenheit, but it has an addition of oud in here. There's also myrrh and incense as some of the other notes in the fragrance. And you could think of it as a bit of a richer, a warmer, deeper take on Dior's Fahrenheit that still maintains that violet petrol kind of feel from the original, but is not maybe quite as aggressive with it. I know you would think that it would be because it's Fahrenheit absolute and has this darker coloration to it, but it's actually really, really well done and quite smooth when you consider how much of a pop this has to it. There are a number of different Fahrenheit flankers that I wish they'd bring back. Aqua Fahrenheit, for example, I think is much better than Fahrenheit Cologne, but if I could take just one, I think it'd be this one right now. Bring this one back. Then one from Christian LaCroix, it is Tumulte. And this fragrance also used to be quite cheap. The bottle on it looks fantastic, really love it. I've got two bottles of this stuff, this 50 mil and then a 100 mil. And because of this fragrance, I bought Bizarre also from this house and Bizarre is trash, it sucks. It was one of those deals where this fragrance used to be cheap and I really like this one and Bizarre you can still find cheap. So I thought to myself, well, maybe it's a bit of a hidden gem. No, it's, it's just a mess. It's really cheap smelling. This though, smells a bit similar to Kyoto from Comme de Garçon. It has juniper and violet, bay leaf, even a bit of plum, but really what stands out here are the woody notes. They smell great. Cedar and sandalwood specifically, and it also has a bit of a similarity to Gucci Rush, which is another fantastic discontinued Gucci fragrance that was out around the same time as Envy for Men that we talked about earlier. If you like very woody fragrances, then I would say if you ever find this one for a good price, scoop it up because this is a discontinued hidden gem. And then last but not least, a very obvious fragrance that I have to put into this video. I have to do it. It's Midnight in Paris. This is one of the most heralded discontinued former cheapies. People talk about it all the time, even to this day, and for good reason. It smells similar in ways, shapes, facets, forms to Lunarosa Black. 
and Bulgari Black. That style of fragrance, that family of fragrance is what Midnight in Paris is gonna be bringing. It is a bit powdery, balsamic. Uh, some people would say it's a unisex fragrance, but I never ever had a problem pulling this one off. I actually wore it to the office a number of times, even though it's definitely not what most people would think of as an office fragrance, but it worked well. I've always thought the bottle was beautiful, especially when you consider when I got this, you could buy it at discounters for about $20. I think it was actually under $20 at the time. Something like $17 or $18 for a 75 milliliter bottle, full presentation. One of the best buys that you could ever make in terms of the quality versus what you paid. It has leather, tea, tonka, and incense. This is the Eau de Toilette. There was also an Eau de Parfum version, which goes for more money on the secondhand market nowadays, but the Eau de Toilette is still expensive also. And I think with this one, what made people even more upset that it was discontinued was that it was followed up with In New York, which I've talked about on this channel before. It smells fine, but it's a more standard, versatile, wannabe blue type of fragrance. It's not as original. It doesn't really stick in your mind like this one did. And on top of it all, when they first announced in New York, it was announced as Midnight in New York, and the bottle was similar to this one, looked really pretty. It was on all the fragrance websites. And then somehow that all changed, and when the fragrance came out, Midnight was dropped and it was just in New York and the bottle was just a plain square. So everybody was even more upset that this got canned and then their follow-up was that. So there we go guys, seven fragrances that I love that I wish they would bring back that they probably never will. I mean, I would take any of these, any of those coming back would be a W. I mean, Escada making men's fragrances again, I would take that, that'd be a W. Maybe Gucci re-releasing uh, Gucci Pour Homme 1 and 2, Rush and Envy. Some sort of a uh, line where they bring them all back to life. Whew, be all over that. All right, guys, leave me a comment below. Let me know a fragrance that you wish they would bring back. Something that you wore in the past or something that maybe you didn't get to try that you really wish you could get your hands on. What would it be if you could bring back just one thing? Thank you for hanging with me. Thanks for your support. Stay safe out there. I'll see you guys tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys later.